the Piopoli Phenom Forge. Let's take a look. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, I've wanted to get my hands on a Piopoli for ages. So when they contacted me recently and asked if I'd like to review their Phenom Forge, I jumped at the chance. But when two large boxes turned up, I began to wonder what I'd let myself in for. And when I opened those boxes, it really was brown trousers time. I was shocked. I truly was. I've come across self-assembly with FDM printers, but never with resin printers. And I expected nothing good to come from it, especially as the packages contain no instructions. After a 10 minute anxiety attack, I headed over to the Piopoli website. There I found a very accessible support section, listing everything I needed to do in a pleasantly clear and straightforward manner. Now if you look again here, there seems an incredible amount to do, but actually there isn't. All the clever projection stuff is taken care of in the base. So other than bolting on the very substantial Z-Rail, the rest is pretty much just bolting together the enclosure case. Don't get me wrong, this took me a good hour, but I was being extremely cautious. There was a couple of times when the wiring connectors needed pushing together, but actually this was easier than building the average FDM printer. And the finished look, ignoring the reflections of the phone, camera, stand, wood glue, sockets and general detritus, it is actually quite attractive. And do you know what? This is a very clever idea by Piopoli because as I'd assembled the cabinet myself, I took a surprising amount of pride in the end result, something I've never done before with a resin printer. I have got a couple of gripes though. Following the instructions is easy, but look at these labels. Come on Piopoli, put some ink in the labeling machine. And the finish, whilst nice, is spoiled by poor afterthought. These end sections stand out to me and look unfinished against the rest of the black metal. Some simple plastic end covers would hide these and make things blend more professionally. But with these gripes aside, it's a very sturdy and roomy enclosure, allowing for a print height of 350mm, something only succeeded by the frozen Mega 8K. The base has adjustable feet to allow perfect leveling, a useful feature in a printer this large. Inside, we get a good look at the sturdy and substantial Z upright, with widely spaced dual linear rails, allowing for smooth movement of the Z arm. The Phenom has a 6K monochrome screen, producing a 50 micron XY resolution which is very similar to the specs of other printers in this range. Sure enough, it's beaten by Frozen's Mega 8K and Anycubic's M3 Max, but the difference is so marginal, it's unlikely to show. However, Piopoli do claim that their 6K screen is high contrast, with a parallel LED light source for improved UV light distribution. It allows the Phenom to comfortably print at 100 microns, which can significantly reduce printing times. The build plate is a metal monster, as you'd expect from such a big machine. The resin tray is also hugely proportioned and comes with its own USB port. But before you plug your phone into this, remember that this tray is temperature controlled. <laughs> Yes, yes guys, someone has been listening. Temperature is very important to successful resin printing and Piopoli have fitted a temperature controlled vat to the Phenom Forge. Take note other companies, this is what we want to see. This feature operates through a separate control unit. Piopoli have cleverly allowed access points within their casing for the USB cable to pass through. Though with the size of this base, I think it's a shame they didn't incorporate the controller within the base or allow somewhere for it to be bolted on. 
that that is secured by very anticlimactic wing nuts, cheapening the innovations with overzealous cost cutting. But the tank holds around 2.5 litres of resin, which should be good for most print jobs. Unfortunately, it was a cold day in my workshop when I tested the heated vat, just 7 degrees Celsius in fact. And whilst the heater performed admirably, warming the resin to 22 degrees in just 30 minutes, it never got any hotter than that. Had the ambient temperature been warmer, say 15 degrees or so, I'm confident it would have worked. But if you're in a very cold climate, consider Piopoli's dedicated enclosure heater, which does fit inside and which did do a perfectly good job for me. And the innovations don't end there. The Venom was developed around the Blair control board, helping to break the monopoly of the infamous CBD Tech controller, those happy chaps that gave us G2 Box. I've had my eye on Blair for a while now, it's promising some interesting features like faster processing, improved anti-aliasing and multi-layer exposure. Blair also has its own slicer, which again I've been watching with interest. It has some exciting features which could one day make it a suitable alternative to my favourite slicer, Lychee, though that day hasn't come yet. But if and when it does, listen for it here as you can be sure I'll tell you all about it. Now, Piopoli are truly buying into the improved features of Vlair, and for that reason, the USB thumb drive includes a copy of the Vlair slicer. But your two box and Leechy also support the Phenom, if that's your preference. Again, the innovations keep piling up, as the Phenom not only gives us Wi-Fi, but also comes with an infrared camera for remote monitoring. To achieve this, you'll need to make use of the third-party Nexus software, but it's free and a feature I can see being very popular. Unfortunately, there's no Wi-Fi in my workshop, so these are features that I couldn't test. You'll find the Wi-Fi antenna on the left side of the base, along with the USB port. The power point and switch are situated on the right-hand side. Finishing off the base, there's a comfortably sized color touch screen. The user interface is very simple and easy to follow, and the touch screen is sensitive enough to make this effortless. So how does it print? Piopoli kindly sent me a bottle of their deft gray resin to try with their venom. And let me just say, I'm often asked whether a resin I've tried has a strong odor as this does affect many people. Normally, I can't answer this question, as strong smells don't bother me, because I've been married to my wife for many years. But this deft resin really does have a very strong odour. Sorry, Piopoli, but this is the stinkiest resin I've ever tried, and in honesty, there's better alternatives out there. Luckily, of course, you can use any type of 405 wavelength resin with the Phenom. Anyway, Piopoli is keen to demonstrate how well the large plate and uniform light source work. So you get a plateful of test prints. And my little stinkers came out great, adhering very well to the plate. The Merilab Town test print came out great too, every bit as well as you'd expect from a 50 micron printer. For jewellery lovers, I printed the open source ring, as well as my dead man's hand ring, and my Judge Dread ring. For something a little larger, I printed this amazing scorn school model by Printed Obsession, which I found on Thangs.com. All in all, the Phenom prints well. So what do I think of the Piopoli Phenom Forge? Well, like I just said, it prints well and can do so adequately with a single item or a plateful. It's packed with innovations like a heated vat, a flare control board, Wi-Fi and an infrared camera as standard. In terms of appearance, it's a nice looking machine, though a few finishing touches like end caps and plastic knobs 
a favourite with many adventurous printers, would have given the Venom an overall more professional look that these silly oversights deny it. In terms of cost, sale events aside, it's the cheapest of the large printers I've reviewed, and this is certainly aided by the self-assembly aspect of this printer, designed no doubt to reduce product and transportation costs. Now, this self-assembly might not be for everyone, but if you're put off by this, don't be. Honestly, I was. I hated the idea, but when I actually knuckled down to it, it was very basic and easy, with nothing taxing or demanding. And importantly, this self-assembly somehow builds in a sense of confidence and pride, which could actually be pretty useful. For instance, I praised the Elegoo Jupiter 6K because of the suggestion that it might be upgradable, something that Elegoo had never actually confirmed to me, and something that I've yet to independently verify. But the Jupiter came fully assembled, and ironically, taking it apart would probably unnerve me. However, when it comes to the Phenom Forge, thanks to that self-assembly, I'm confident I could tackle any update or repair. With this box section framing throughout the enclosure, it would be simplicity itself to add internal lighting, extra heaters, or even filters or venting for that stinky deft resin. And if you feel there's insufficient room inside, the panels can be removed and modified with ease. Now, let me share with you a little secret about Piopoli. They tell me that most of their customers are actually print farms. And why should this be? Sure, at these prices, buying several in exchange for a little self-assembly dramatically reduces costs. But that's not all of it. It's the upgradability factor. It's the easy replacement of parts that eventually wear out after thousands of hours of use. It's that time-saving benefit of faster processing and multi-layer exposure. Why print supports at 20 microns when you can blast them out in minutes at 100 microns? Why fit tiny internal carbon air filters when you can unscrew the top panel, cut a dirty great hole in it and connect a 6-inch extraction vent? So, is the Piopoli Phenom Forge for everyone? Well, obviously not. That self-assembly will worry some people, and Piopoli know this. But they also know who their customers are, and they know they'll keep coming back for more. Print farms are, after all, run by professionals, and such people need to make savvy choices in order to survive. In terms of print quality, there's nothing really between the Phenom and its rivals. In terms of print size, it sits comfortably in second place. But in terms of price, it's an outright winner. So let's face it, the Piopoli Phenom Forge will sell. Of that, I'm totally confident. So that's it for this review, guys. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. So take care, and thanks for watching.